stringent efforts to align itself with the anti-corruption posture. Nigerian Air Force reiterates commitment to a transparent pr procurement process. Good evening and welcome. This is NTA Network News, reaching you live from Abuja. I am Lauri Balahassan and Jennifer is in Lagos. While Zainab is in Sakwatu. Nigeria now has a national policy on justice. The policy was validated in Abuja at a summit organized by the Federal Ministry of Justice and attended by all states of the Federation. Femi Okeowo reports on this new stride in the justice sector. There is hardly any arm of Nigeria's justice sector that does not have rules, regulations, or indeed guidelines on their operations. But this is the first time that a uniform document is being produced to harmonize the various reforms being initiated across the justice sector, streamline the rules of procedure in the courts of the land, and create a better synergy for all the justice sector institutions. Chief Justice of Nigeria, in his message to the validation of the policy, said this will help build consensus among the justice sector institutions and practitioners as a way of addressing the challenges facing justice delivery in Nigeria. A national policy on justice is therefore a broad course to plan of action, agreed or chosen to guide the justice system. This policy provides the framework for resolving cross-institutional problems. Uh, it is a result of very extensive work and also uh, clearly a lot of input from all the relevant stakeholders. Representatives of the legislature commended the document and promised to lend their support to its implementation. In order to restore confidence amongst Nigerians in our justice system, Judicial reforms need to be institutionalized. Implementation is key. So we have identified those key actors, what they have to do, the timeline. Is it's the first policy uh, that tries to bring that actually comprehensiveness and also the oneness in the entire justice sector. One delightful thing about this document is that since the authors know that Nigeria is not in short supply of policies and documents, but mainly of implementation, emphasis in the document has been more on how it will translate practically into action in the justice sector. In Abuja, Femi Okeowo, NT News. And joining us in the studio to expatiate on the content and implementation of the National Policy on Justice is the Chairman Technical Committee, Professor Mohamed Tadu, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Many thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. Thank you very much, Sorry for Only last me. year, the Chief Justice of Nigeria presented a national judicial policy. What is the difference between this and that one? The national uh, policy on justice, which was adopted today, uh, covers uh, a wider spectrum in the sense that uh, it is concerned with the whole justice system, uh, including, of course, the judiciary and taking into account what is in the national uh, judicial policy. Um, furthermore, this is the first time when all the actors, institutions uh, at the state and federal level came together to agree on a document which represents not just aspiration but also course of action as to how our justice system will be transformed so that it serves Nigerians better deliver justice according to the expectations of uh, our people. The participation of states is um, key to the success of this uh, policy. What are you doing in this regard concerning this policy? Well, first of all, there has been extensive consultation with the state and they were represented at the event we have today. And then, you know, the development of a policy like that in a federation like Nigeria, which is complex, is uh, quite a process. So from what has happened today, the policy will now move to additional 
meetings and consultations uh, with the at the state level so that uh, the consensus around it will be strengthened and the capacity to implement it of every part of the country, uh, the federation, the states, the variety of institutions will be assured through um, this process of uh, dissemination, consultation, understanding. Okay, um, we would like to find out if your committee will now wind up now that you have complete what's now that you have completed the validation, we'd like to we'd like you to tell us more, like Nigerians on this particular policy, we'd like you to shed more light on this particular policy. What do Nigerians expect? Yes, what uh, this uh, policy entails is uh, a movement forward on many of the issues that disturb people about our justice system. You know, one doesn't have to explain. Everybody in Nigeria knows the experiences we go through when we have to interact with the justice system, with its various institutions. Is it the court? Is it the police? Is it the prison? So what this policy has done is to say that uh, justice is a service to be delivered to people. And it should be done according to principles that are set in our constitution. For instance, our constitution says administration of justice should be fair, should be equitable, should not take too much of people's time. That is, it should be timely. So um, well, the, um, we'd like to, to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. I've been speaking with uh, Professor Muhammad Tabiu, a senior advocate of Nigeria and Chairman, Technical Committee on the National Policy on Justice. And moving on now, the Acting President, Yemi Oshinbajo, has reminded public officers of the need to ensure the full implementation of the Economic Recovery Plan, stressing that government remains committed to the transformation of Nigeria for good. He was speaking at a retreat organized for cabinet members, permanent secretaries, and top officials of ministries, departments, and agencies in Abuja. State House correspondent Jide Unifadi reports. The Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, as explained by the Ministry of Budget and National Planning, is a more comprehensive medium-term plan that articulates the vision of the Buhari administration for the country for the period of 2017 to 2020 and lays the foundation for long-term growth. The plan stipulates, among others, the role of government in facilitating, enabling, and supporting the economic activities of businesses. Acting President Yemi Oshimbacho, who spoke to participants in a closed-door party, said the success of the plan would depend largely on its effective implementation including effective coordination of its implementation amongst all stakeholders at national and subnational levels. The Ministry of Budget and National Planning is charged to provide regular updates on the plan. And this retreat, which is also on the 2018 budget preparation process, has the theme Building Synergy for Effective Economic Recovery and Growth Plan Implementation. More detailed preparatory work for the 2018 budget is on. So this retreat, uh, members of cabinet, as well as permanent secretaries and heads of agencies will be looking at the next steps uh, for the 2018 budget preparation. And the government is committed to bring the change that we promised. And this is part of that exercise. A presentation titled The Road Less Traveled, Demolition Transformation Journey was made by Dr. Idris Jala from Malaysia. From the banquet hall of the State House, Jide Onifate, NT News. Nigeria's Bankers Committee has expressed confidence in the growth and recovery process of the country, saying all economic parameters point to the fact that the economy will soon bounce back to growth. Shikiola Ipinayi reports. The confidence expressed by the committee on the growth recovery process presents a sense of relief. But the fact that major non oil sectors have witnessed positive growth, and because growth in this economy is driven largely by the non oil sectors. It shows that the banks have really done a lot of rallying 
It shows that the banks have been resilient. It shows that the banks have um, contributed largely in bringing in as many FDIs, FPIs, investors. But beyond this is the news of the constitution of the Agri and Small and Medium Skill Enterprises Equity Fund, which is a pool of funds from 5% of the profit of banks made available to be accessed by all interested. And over the course of the next uh, few weeks, there will be more communication as to how to access those funds. So entrepreneurs, small businesses, agriculture, uh, the opportunity uh, is there for equity uh, funding for your businesses. It's so difficult to get equity in Nigeria and very often people mistake the need for equity as a need for bank loan. So you need to have sufficient equity first before you can then go and get a loan. The economic indicators now show that foreign exchange reserves is on a two-year high at $31.2 billion, up from $30.9 billion last month. And inflation rate remains moderated for the fifth consecutive month at 16.10%. Purchasing Managers Index PMI has recorded a four-month consecutive improvement at 54.1 percent as of July 2017, an indication of improved manufacturing sector. In Abuja, Shikeola Ikbenaye, NTA News. The National Orientation Agency, NOA, says the current ugly trend of hate speeches must not be allowed to snowball into a war situation. Director General of the agency, Dr. Garba Abari, raised the concern in Abuja while briefing the media on what he described as the raising wave of hate messages in circulation in Nigeria. Timothy Yusuf reports. It is a fact that no nation can survive in the face of unchecked hate and divisive speeches. It is in these directions that ongoing altercations and vituperations of hate by individuals, well-known leaders, religious leaders, group of persons and organizations are perceived to have a strong looming disaster. The Director General of the National Orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abari, notes that the latest disturbing aspect of the trend is that of hate songs. In order to address the concerns caused by the several agitations by ethnic religious interests, that have also led to illegal quit orders and the counter orders against one another and some communities. The National Orientation Agency has directed all state directorates and the community orientation and the mobilization officers to commence peace buildings and starvation and advocacy visits to settler communities to assure them of government's commitment to their safety and the security. On the social media, Dr. Abari disclosed that the agency has embarked on the Say No to Hate Speech strategic campaign using the social media platforms. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NTA News. As the anti-corruption war to the present administration rages on, the Nigerian Air Force says it is committed to ensuring a transparent procurement process for its equip equipment. Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, stated this at a workshop in collaboration with Transparency International for procurement officers of the Air Force in Abuja. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports. A survey by Transparency International in 2014 and 2015 ranked Nigeria amongst the highest risk corruption categories in the defense and security sector. The period, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar says, was when the Air Force used a tenders board for all its equipment and materials procurement, a process adjudged not transparent and not in consonance with global best practices. In the past two years, and since my assumption of office, the Nigerian Air Force has made stringent efforts to align itself with the anti-corruption posture of the current administration, requiring a strict observance of the national procurement policy. To this end, the Chief of Air Staff is canvassing the patronage of made in Nigeria military equipment and materials, but first, the enhancement of procurement officers' capacity. Senior Advisor, Transparency International, Ian Andrews, speaking on why does corruption in defense matter, explains that it is dangerous, divisive, and wasteful. This is a huge problem. It is a problem, a challenge facing the whole world, and we will be as effective in dealing with it 
urging Nigeria to take a cue from Colombia's approach to equip its armed forces. Transparency International says it is focused on combating corruption and enhancing operational effectiveness of the nation's military. In Abuja, Isaac Unkuma, NTA News. The group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Dr. Mekan Tiburu, has inaugurated the organization's anti-corruption committee with a call to embrace accountability and zero tolerance to corruption in all ramifications. The GMD, who urged the new members to surpass achievements of past committees, stressed that management will not shy away from dealing with proven cases of corruption, no matter who is involved. Lydia Sampson has the reports. Dr. Mekantibaru, who was a one-time chairman of NMPC Anti-Corruption Committee, understands the dire need for enshrining transparency and accountability in the NNPC. Now that he calls the shots at the organization, he's driven by the passion to make it a shining example of integrity, honesty, loyalty, and poverty by expunging all shades of corruption and shady dealings associated with the organization. Some of them served under my leadership. We will take on from where we stop and look at other ways, look at the areas where our staff are more exposed and further, further down, ensure that they, they effectively uh, make the staff safe from committing corrupt practices. The GMD also directed NMPC subsidiaries to immediately inaugurate their anti-corruption units to work with the Corporate Anti-Corruption Committee to fast-track the realization of a corrupt-free organization. Anybody within NMPC who believes that what's happening around him cannot keep him going, unless you put your hand into the cookie jar, you are not doing the right thing, and the best thing for you is please shep out. The NMPC management also says the stability in the Niger Delta is boosting upstream production as four projects worth billions of dollars have been attracted. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. The chief of air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, has challenged officers and men of the Air Force towards redoubling their gallant commitment to consolidating on the gains of the counterinsurgency operations in tune with the recent presidential directives. Rayanu Bala reports on the routine operational visit of the Chief of Air Staff to Yola Air Force Base. The Chief of Air Staff, who was on a routine operational visit, interacted with officers and men of the Nigerian Air Force with a view to boosting their morale towards fighting insurgency and other criminal acts. He challenged them to make sacrifices in order to safeguard the country from criminal elements through patriotic commitment to duty. Sadiq Baba Abaka revealed that more serviceable aircrafts and other equipment will be provided to support their operations towards clearing remnants of Boko Haram terrorists in the Northeast. We are going to work much harder again. We have inducted additional airplanes. And still on security matters, the Director General Nigerian Army Resource Center Johnny Hamaking has reiterated the commitment of the institution, being the think tank of the armed forces, to continue to build capacity and generate ideas towards defense and security matters of the nation. He stated this at the unveiling of the platform on donation of relief materials to victims of insurgency. Olajide Bello reports. With the armed forces' concerted efforts in degrading Boko Haram and restoring peace in the northeast positively yielding success, emphasis by the federal government, the armed forces and donor agencies has been on resettling and rehabilitating the internally displaced persons. These have manifested through donation of relief to bring succor to the victims of insurgency. It is in view of this that the Children's Government Nigeria unveiled a nationwide relief material mobilization campaign. So the authors, widows and wounded members of the armed forces who are victims of the insurgency that we care. We care and we will fight and win this war together. I commend you all for the time and zeal in coming together as a group for progress and provision of support to the less privileged and our fellow heroes. 
The Children Government of Nigeria is an advocacy platform for children to contribute their quota towards raising awareness for support of victims of insurgency and fallen heroes of the armed forces. In Abuja, Olajide Bello, NTA News. And now a beat on Kenyan politics. Incumbent Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta has maintained lead in Tuesday's election as the Independent Electoral Commission continues to count votes. Earlier reports in the day say about 95.3% of the votes have been counted and the final result is likely to be announced as early as Friday. International observers in their provisional report this Thursday say the election was credible despite allegations of manipulation leveled against the Electoral Commission by the main opposition candidate. Violence broke out after the election following this allegation and five people were said to have been killed as a result. Kenya has a history of post-election violence which led to the prosecution of incumbent president Uhuru Kenyatta at the International Criminal Court of Justice. And I'm now being joined by Sandra Ochola, a Nairobi-based journalist. Hello, Sandra. In terms of collation of results, I just asked that what is the present position in terms of collation of results? I'm just from the Tallinn Center. I spent most of my afternoon there and things are going as, um, as expected. We are receiving more forms uh, from the constituency tallying levels and uh, we are expecting to get the results as soon as possible. Uh, the IBC, which is our Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, uh, has a seven-day mandate to give the, to give the results and uh, it is our hope that uh, things will remain as they are and we'll have a declaration from them on who has won the election by that time. International observers have given the election a pass mark, but the main opposition candidate, Raila Odinga, has alleged manipulation of the election results. What is the general feeling amongst the people about this process? I, I do agree with you on the fact that uh, the international community, both the regional uh, from Africa, the, the, the U.S. and even the European Union, have given this particular election a pass. It was conducted in a free, fair and uh, credible environment. And truly, majority of Kenyans uh, are said to have had their say, so to speak. Uh, the allegations from uh, the main opposition party, and that is NASA, the National Super Alliance uh, Coalition, led by uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, have, however, come with uh, claims stating that uh, the process wasn't free and fair. Mm -hmm. And it's not uh, particularly on um, the voting process. The issue has come about with the tallying process. And you see, within our electoral period, within our electoral system, uh, uh, results are taken from the polling center, they're taken to the constituency, and then they're taken to the national uh, tallying center. So what has happened is that the IBC has been uh, uh, announcing results, or rather has made the results from the polling center available procedurally, not that they have broken any law. And so that is where the basis of the, of the controversy is. We'd like to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on NTA Network News. Thank you. watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Up ahead on the news tonight, NTA Star Times donate viewing center. Details when we return. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest.
And the next minute, the house is a club, Abby. We're studying, sir. Having your fun interrupted is like not auto renewing your data plan. For non stop fun on the network, simply auto renew your data plan. Get double the data and double the fun. Put on your headphones. Triple seven hash. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. Friday, 11th August is free data day nationwide. Get 200 MB free data and make something happen. Hey, now who they here? My name now Mr. Shortcut. I demand my money. Now cheap cheap one. I they buy. Thumb that we sign. Now go buy cheap one. <laughs> hey. Now what can you on for my yard? I cheap building material where we take build my office. I just say I deserve money. Office building collapse. And fire burn my house. Hey, hey. You don't see what happened to Mr. Shortcut? Well, Standards Organization of Nigeria, S-O-N, don't ready for action and say enough of pain, loss and wastage. And if you see product where no day correct, call the S-O-N office when near you. Or S-O-N app desk. Standards Organization of Nigeria. Improving life through standards. When growth flows from the middle out, that's sound economic wisdom. When it spreads everywhere, reaching and affecting many people, that's inclusive governance. In Yogi, such impact is loudly pronounced in the health and education sectors. Qualitative, accessible, and affordable healthcare facilities in all parts of the state. Yogi's progress in healthcare is tied to an equally reformed and growing education sector. Education structures are built, rehabilitated, and expanded, providing the right learning environment at all levels. This is the story at GGSS Nguru, GSS Yunusawi, GSS Ryokura. It is also the story at GSS Fika, and now GSS Nangere. These are surely worthy investments for today and tomorrow. Ibrahim Gaydam, Governance Democratized. Yobe, truly the pride of the Sahel. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGB Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country just away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Get ready for the Diaspora Festival Badagri Lagos as we welcome Diasporans. Our ancestors walked through the door of no return. Now we walk through the the door of return. And also to celebrate the cultural heritage of Nigeria. 
theme, Voyage to Heritage, featuring a lot of exciting activities like the historic Door of Return ceremony, Carnival procession, Boat Regatta, Dark Era procession, Fishing competition, Heritage site visits, International Music Concert, an International Symposium, theme, African Diaspora Beyond the Atlantic, and lots more. Date. 23rd to 25th of August 2017. For sponsorship and more information, please call. Come and join the voyage to Heritage. See you there. The Niger State Government is organizing a two day investment summit with the theme Impact Investing for Advancing Agricultural Economy and Innovation. Chairman of the summit, Acting President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, Father of the Day, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, former President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Royal Father of the Day, Etunupi and Chairman, Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers, Alhaji Yahya Abubakar, Chief Host, Alhaji Abubakar Sani Bello, Executive Governor, Niger State, Guests of Honor, Alhaji Ahmed Marafa, Speaker, Niger State House of Assembly, and other members, Venue, Justice Idris Labo Kutigi International Conference Center, MINA. Date, 10 to 15th August 2017. Time, 10 a.m. Announcer, Haji Aramotu Mohamed Yaradua, Honorable Commissioner, Minister of Investment, Commerce and Industry, Niger State. Welcome back. This is NTA Network News. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, says it has not launched any recruitment campaign, reacting to reports of fresh recruitment adverts purportedly from the corporation on circulation by mails, text messages, and social media. The group General Group Public Affairs Division of the NNPC, Mr. Ogamadu, in a statement noted that the said advert, which is on a fake NNPC letter-headed paper, and allegedly signed by the group managing director and the chief operating officer refineries is another scam. He said the scam directing job seekers to come for interview at the NMPC towers and other locations is to extort money from them. Mr. Ogamadu therefore advised anyone who received such invitation to quickly report to law enforcement agencies as the corporation is currently engaging security agencies on the issue. The commander of Federal Road Safety Corps, Boboye Uyeyemi, has applauded Jigar State government's effort in road safety management and appealed for the establishment of state traffic management agency to check road crashes. He stated this while chatting with Governor Muhammad Badaru Abubakar during a working visit to the state. Habibu Husseini has details. Federal Road Safety Co. established with a mandate of road safety management has been partnering with various stakeholders to ensure safety of people plying major roads across the country. The co commander, Dr. Boboe Oyeyemi, was recently in Jigawa State seeking for support toward actualizing the sole mandate of the commission. The usual driving school have taken a big leap, but I would further request that if you can have this, we need more driving schools. And that means you are an apostle of road safety. You have really demonstrated your passion for sanctity of lives and property. Damna Muhammad Badr Abakar commended Road Safety Co. for its role in ensuring safety on the nation's major highways and called for reorientation of co marshals on professional conducts for better public understanding. I believe you have to direct your audit officers to do their work diligently, not to resort on harassment or intimidation. The co-commander had later paid homage to the Emir Abduzi Al-Haji Nuhu Muhammad Sunusi, soliciting traditional institution support in enlightening their subjects on the need to respect road traffic rules and regulations. From Duzi, Habib Hussein, NTA News. The NTA Star Times Network has donated a viewing center to the inhabitants of Hulumi community in Abuja as part of its social responsibility. Debola Brooklyn Sunday was there. Hulumi is a community located in the suburb of Abuja Municipal Area Council. It is about 30 kilometers away from the city center. A community primary school, solar powered water supply unit, and a healthcare center are the major infrastructure in the community. The viewing center was donated to keep the people of the community abreast of activities around them both within and outside Nigeria. 
political office holders, media executives, traditional rulers, and other dignitaries witnessed the epoch-making event as part of bids to identify with the people. We are committed to providing these facilities to more villages in the very near future. And we shall also provide maintenance of these facilities free of charge for the next one year. Show mutual understanding and support to each other on issues involving core interests and the major concerns of each other side. We pray and hope that the normal cooperation and usual cooperation that has been given to us will be extended to other communities. The center is equipped with a projector and receivers which will be powered by solar energy. They have given us opportunity in this village, particularly. So it's left for us to make use of it. It will go a long way to help us, despite that we don't have light for two years now. But at least with this solar energy, it will help us. Star Times began operations in Nigeria in 2010. The donation of this satellite TV viewing center is expected to enable the residents of Hunumi community view all digital channels on the Star Times platform. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Guests on NTA's current affairs program, Moment for Thoughts, have attributed the social ills in the society to moral decadence. Inordinate ambition. Everybody wants to get money and wants to get it quickly. Yes. We don't want to work anymore. And therefore, I better um, advise here that um, we should discourage worshipping, promoting, and giving titles and recognize those who display money in a society without even knowing the source. We are suffering more from acquired ethics deficiency syndrome. Hmm. The, the entire the, nation is suffering from it. The railing value systems. The, re, the complete, I mean, nobody asks the next person now, say, how did you come by this wealth? Moment for Thoughts comes up tonight at half past 10 on the network service of the NTA. Time now to join Jennifer in our Lagos Network Center for more reports. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Laurie. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. A stakeholders forum aimed at addressing malnutrition resulting from the absence of fortified foods has held in Lagos. Participants at the event examined the theme, Strengthening African Processors of Fortified Foods. Ametripayos reports that the interactive session brought together operators from both public and private sectors. Available statistics show that Nigeria had and still has one of the highest rates of child and maternal mortality rates in the world, with vitamin A deficiency being a major contributory factor. As a result of this and to enhance quality of food, the federal government mandated food processors to fortify products with basic nutrients such as vitamin A, iron, and iodine. This directive, however, has only been achieved in salt, sugar, and flour. From now on, it will be the engagement with food industries, continuous engagement with government. The focus of this meeting, therefore, is to discuss ways to extend the fortification process to other food items. Food processors at this forum say the cost of fortifying other foods and support from government to ensure compliance are key areas that must be addressed. I challenge all of you a bit at the end. I think there's actually a lot to learn from the progress other countries in ECOWAS have made in food fortification. Our public health goals should align with the business goals of the private sector. We would like to reduce my micronutrient deficiencies and stunting. On the other hand, we must make our food processing sector profitable and competitive. Food processors at this forum say the cost of fortifying other foods and support from government to ensure compliance are key areas that must be addressed. Building a business case for nutrition in Nigeria and commitment to building the competitiveness of the Nigerian food processing industry were also examined by panelists at the forum. In Lagos, Amechi Pius, NTA News. 
The research and development capabilities of the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Oshodi, on food agro allied products make it imperative for the United Nations to work with the federal government on the actualization of sustainable development goals in Nigeria. Resident and humanitarian coordinator of the United Nations in Nigeria, Edward Kalon, stated this after paying a courtesy visit to Firo in Lagos. Musa Toliat completes the report. The United Nations resident and humanitarian coordinator in Nigeria, Edward Kalon, said, given the right policies and the extensive research on food and agro allied products by Firo, Nigeria is positioned to actualize the 17 sustainable development goals in no distant time. Mr. Kalon, however, stressed, that the United Nations will not only work with the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Oshodi, in the areas of enhancing innovative technologies, but will also establish partnership framework with Nigeria on inclusive economic growth. Innovation, and technology transfer, and entrepreneurship. Those are the three areas we are very, very much interested in, but we want to adapt it to a value chain and also adapt it to regional um, comparative advantages. Officials of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, is also set to collaborate with FIRO on entrepreneurship and youth development. I've singled out um, innovation and entrepreneurship because this is what can connect and dynamize the energies of the young people in this country. So I think we'll be investing in that and bringing this, these two components together. We're looking in terms of accreditation of our laboratories with all the various organizations of the United Nations coming in on board to also make sure that science and technology is taken to the highest level. The United Nations resident and humanitarian coordinator and his team also inspected facilities at FIRO in Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. It's time for some messages. The news will continue shortly with Laurie in Abuja. The move. In locations competition is in. Who knows? Six in Lagos, eight in Abuja, and opening another in Abuja next week. Who's it guy? No man. Moses was at Chelsea. Then he went to Liverpool. But before that, he was at Crystal Palace 2007. Joined Chelsea 2012. 42 career goals. Mm. <laughs> this coffee is nice. I wonder where it's from. This blend is actually from Brazil. However, coffee originated in Ethiopia in the 13th century. Mm. Connect from any network with Glow MiFi. Share and enjoy 4G data speeds on any 2G or 3G device nationwide. Yes, Ah, flavor. Your name is Tunedo Okoli, born 1983. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Friday, 11th August is Free Data Day nationwide. Get 200 MB free data and make something happen. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Cadbury Born Vita now comes in an attractive new 500 gram refill pack. Simply open and reseal after use to retain the chocolatey and creamy taste. Cadbury Born Vita, prepare to win. Reorganized, trained, and fully equipped, we are the new improved Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism, and other criminal activities. Be productive. Be security conscious. Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. Welcome back. You're still watching NTA Network News. 
National Bureau of Statistics says Nigeria's economy expanded in the second quarter of 2017. This and closing figures with Chiazalam Ikie on Business News. It's glad to have you join me on Business News. The Federal Executive Council has just approved the 2018 to 2020 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper, setting the stage for transmission to the National Assembly with a resolve towards achieving 7% growth rate by the end of the period. Economic analyst Nia Kinsiju speaks on the impacts of this to resuscitate the economy. The forecast is that. The price of crude oil per barrel in the international market should not go below $45 in 2018, you know. So, uh, by, by stating at 45 it's like trying to be conservative. Meanwhile, the federal government's bid to discourage importation of vehicles through neighboring countries may remain a mirage as importers appear to have solace in the range of incentives offered by the port of Cotonou in Benin Republic. A recent survey indicates that the autonomous port of Cotonou has recently slashed its transit vehicle charges from 399,920 cephas to 290,000 cephas, effective from July 1, 2017. And the National Bureau of Statistics says the nation's economy expanded in the second quarter as factory and farming outputs improved, helping it recover from the first annual contraction in 25 years. Statistician General Yemi Kale said intuitively that Nigeria may be getting out of recession in the second quarter. Also, data from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries shows production from Nigeria averaged 1.68 million barrels in the second quarter. That's business news. I'm Chia Zalamek here. The news continues. Please stay with us. Matters of peaceful coexistence on the front burner as ethnic and religious leaders meet in Sokwatu. Details with Zainab in our Sokwatu Network Center. Hello, Zainab. It's over to you. Thank you, Lori, for joining us. Leaders of some ethnic groups and Christian clerics in Sokoto State say they remain committed to contributing towards promoting peace and unity in the state. Mohammed Nasin has the details. Sokoto State, created from the then Northwestern region in 1976, is known to be home for all Nigerians where they reside and live peacefully with their host communities, conducting their daily business in an atmosphere of peace and harmony. All the resident communities are living in peace and harmony. As far as peace is concerned, we have nothing to complain about. When you look at Sokoto these days, Sokoto is every day come. Stranger every day come to Sokoto. Why are they bringing them? The reason why they are coming to Sokoto is because of the peace. The peacefulness of Sokoto is, is, is a, a double edged world. The leaders, the parents, and even the religion. We have not experienced any form of uh, lawlessness in the state. No segregation, no discrimination. You are not known in here. What we refer to you, our brothers and sisters, is non resident communities. We just refer to you as non indigenous Since I came to Sukutu, I never thought of leaving Sukutu for another place. When I came to Sokoto in 75, later I was later transferred back to Lagos, but I said no, Sokoto is my place. Indeed, the testimonies by different ethnic groups and religious leaders indicate that Sokoto State is a home for all Nigerians. In Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. Sokoto State Government is to introduce Special Security Trust Fund. Special Advisor to the Governor on Security Matters, retired AIG Tambari Muhammad Yabo stated this, while on familiarization visit to security outfits in the state. Sheikh Mohammed Beki completes the report. The first point of call of the special advisor was Sokoto State Police Command, where he was received by the Police Commissioner Mohammed Abdul Kadr. Retired A.I. Jitambori Abu, while briefing the Police Commissioner on his mission, said, security is everybody's business, hence the need for collaborative efforts among sister agencies. He said, even though Sokoto is relatively peaceful, there is a need for synergy and concerted effort to ensure the state affords its name of being the most peaceful state in the country. Similar visit was paid to the Department of State Security Service, one brigade Nigerian army, 
where the special advisor informed them of his mission and vision as the special advisor on security matters. The government will liaise with Abuja, the individual headquarters, to seek for assistance so that their strengths could be improved here. Similarly, the special advisor paid a visit to the controller of immigration, Habibu Adam Haruna, and Commandant Nigeria Security and Civil Defense School, Babangida Abdullah Hedusema. At all the places, the special advisor solicited for support and cooperation from the agencies with a view to enhancing public security and peaceful coexistence. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to you, Lori. Thank you, Zainab. Ogochukuka is the next on NTA Network News. Lori, welcome to Benin. Governor Godwin Obaseki is optimistic that the country will bounce back to its pride of place in the production and exportation of oil palm. This was when the governor paid a working visit to the Nigerian Institute for Oil Palm Research, NIFO, located in Ovia northeast of the state. Good luck in Naini has details. The governor, having undertaken a tour of this institute, expressed his pleasure that the country had over the years undermined a natural resource such as the oil palm with potential to grow the nation's economy. He said his administration is ready to make a paradigm shift and go back to status quo. What I'm here today is to start the process, to begin the process of this cooperation between the federal government, this institute, the state government, and the private sector. The acting executive director of the research institute, Dr. Napoleon Iswani, said the institute is endowed and had potentials which could be tapped to boost palm production. From my quarters, um, good luck in any news. The Ondo State House of Assembly has passed the 2017 appropriation bill of the state's oil producing areas development commission of SOPADIC of over 14 billion naira into law. Olubu Kola at the war reports. The House passed the over 14 billion naira budget to law, urging that the ongoing projects that are near completion be given the much needed attention. The House also urged the management of Osupadec to embark on internally generated revenue drive. While speaking on the Commissioner's nominees list, Mrs. Kemisola Adesonya appreciated the State Governor, Ulua Rotimi Akebedolu, for nominating two women. The will include one woman in Other members also lent their voices on the issue, stressing that women are more numerically, and this should reflect while choosing leaders, especially in politics. He has passed a resolution that the governor of the state should be gender sensitive in Akure, Olubukola, Aduo, NTA News. Laura, is back to you for the rest of the news. Many thanks, Ogochukuka. And sports is next after these messages. Notice of the 75th NEC meeting and 2017 special non-elective national convention. Notice is hereby given of the 75th meeting of the National Executive Committee NEC of the People's Democratic Party PDP and 2017 special non-elective national convention as follow. NEC date, Friday, August 11, 2017. Venue, PDP National Secretariat, Plot 1970, Michael Okpara Street, Wu Season 5, Abuja. Time, 6 p.m. National convention, date August 12, 2017. Venue, Eagle Square, Central Business District, Abuja. Time 10 a.m. Member of the NEC and delegate to National Convention are hereby enjoined to attend both events. Sign Prince Dio Adeye, National Publicity Secretary. Bayes University Abuja offers world class education, uninterrupted academic session, and promising degrees. Bayes University Abuja is affordable and delivers quality with experienced international staff, superb facilities, overseas external examiners, and a serene academic atmosphere. We offer quality and affordable education, and students are within easy reach of their parents here at Bayes University Abuja. So learn to live at Bayes University for a brighter future. For more information, visit our website at www.bayesuniversity.edu.ng or call 081-3376-9657.
or 081-3376-9658. Bayes University, Abuja. Learn to live. The night. And now sports. Nigeria now 38 in the world and 6th on the continent in the latest FIFA ranking as coach Salus Yusuf names a 20-man squad to face Benin Republic in 2018 Chan Qualifier Weekend. Kenne Imagodike brings us more on sports updates. Nigeria moved one step up to a 38th position in the world and 6th in Africa following the release of FIFA ranking for the month of August Thursday. Meanwhile, Brazil usurped World and FIFA Confederation Cup champions Germany to top sport, while Argentina are third. Super Eagles chief coach Salis Youssef has released a 20-man list to prosecute this weekend's 2018 African Nations Championship qualifier against the Squirrels of Benin in Cotonou. The list comprises three goalkeepers, six defenders, six midfielders and five strikers. The home-based Eagles will depart Nigeria Friday to Cotonou for the encounter with the return leg built for Sunny Abacha Stadium, Kano, on 19th of August. Nigeria's blessing Okabore Ikoto Guna proved she still has something to offer the nation at the ongoing 16th IAAF World Championships in London as she jumped her way into the final of the women's long jump event midweek, finishing eighth in the overall standing. The Nigeria Gymnastics Federation will soon organize national trials in Abuja with the aim to identify more talent who will form various teams for the nation as she bids to compete for global recognition in the sport. President of the Federation, Prince Calvin Ehizogi, made this known in Abuja midweek while welcoming Team Nigeria, which won two gold and nine bronze medals at the just-ended Regional Africa Gymnastics Level Championships in Pretoria, South Africa. Uh, very soon we are having our trials. When all the gymnasts in the country will come, we test the best and then we pick them and then we begin to work on them. National coach Anthony Asoko and the athletes say they will continue to work hard towards winning more laurels for Nigeria. With Sports Update, Kenan Ima Abodike, NTN News. A wet evening in parts of Abuja Thursday. For Friday's weather outlook across the country, let's now run a quick check. Hello and welcome to the weather forecast. We expect more convective weather activities around the country on Friday, where isolated cases of thunderstorms should affect the northeastern flank of the country, including areas around Gombe, Bauchi, Joss, Abuja and the Mambila Plateau, with possibilities of rain showers over Ilorin, Minashaki, Axis, and the southeast coast.